Yeah. 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 So many lies that you hear from the net, they don't get her respect. She report in the truth, not a check. You wanna unbiased opinion straight from the chest. Not a bit of conflict or someone here for a check. Tune in, these are thoughts from a lawyer on a mission who goes so hard, it's like she works on commission. Trolls in the comments might say she tripping cause they lack the knowledge. They don't know they missing. Got a couple current events that you like. Wanna know about law from the eyes? Tired of all these blogs running lies Because they agenda is a disguise Tune in to the intellect Cause I'm sure y'all missing All the facts of the case That she steady is gifted Someone here for the people Man, it's so uplifting If you ain't subscribed yet Then you just omitting facts Hello, everyone. My name is Pam Esquire, also known as your law intellect. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. You guys are cracking me up. When I, Jessica, when I seen that, that comment that said, you have a call from Nesta, <laughs> I literally heard it in my head. So for those of you that don't know what Jessica is talking about, <laughs> We have been we have been discussing the various open cases. There are seven open cases and investigations currently on Ernest Williams, who is the estranged husband of Shirley Strawberry, the co-host of the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We have done various videos. I've tried to break it down in series because it's just so many things to grapple in order to properly and thoroughly examine this case or these cases. For all of you that are new, welcome. For all of you that have been here, welcome back. Um, we have the last video that we had, we talked about, Shirley, did you know? And I want this video to be considered, I guess, a part two on perhaps there were some things that Shirley didn't know. It could be willful ignorance. Some people have called it, um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, I can't think of the word. But um, people have given a lot of different um, definitions of what they feel like was going on with Shirley. But whatever it is, we are the social media um, jurors. And so we just investigate and we evaluate the cases and the evidence that comes before us. Most of the things that we have are public information. We have public records that we've been over, various cases that Ernest Williams has been involved in currently and in the past. We've also scoured diligently through his uh, Instagram. And today people were giving me videos that he's had from 11, 12 years ago of him on YouTube. Yes, he had a little YouTube channel. So you guys might want to check it out. Not very many videos, but it is kind of hilarious and it um gives you some perspective. Make sure that when you come in, you subscribe. If you have not done so already, please hit that like button. I would greatly appreciate it if you did that. And welcome to everybody. I'm not going to hold you guys long. I've already rambled for two minutes. So I want to get to the issue at hand. So as you've seen from the title, I was looking at some of the things that were going on with Ernest Nesto Williams around the same time of the last video where we discussed the eviction and the processes and the hearing where Erica, I guess, allegedly was acting like the attorney for the whole eviction process and caught a case regarding it. And well, that's what we kind of deduced because of the dates. Of course, we don't know for sure. And Everyone is innocent until proven guilty. We are just laying out the facts, as I said earlier. Um, but around that time, it just seemed like it was a lot that was going on. And we we went over this video on one of the earlier, this was on his Instagram, Instagram page, he being Ernest Williams. And what was interesting to me was when we went over that, birthday video that he had where he got the ring and all of that. And I'll pull that up if I can find it while we're on here. But that was July of 2021. 
where you were having security escorting her in these expensive cars. You bought her this expensive, ridiculous ring where we found out where it came from in one of the previous videos, allegedly, according to one of the alleged victims. But they were getting evicted out of their home and they stretched out that process because as you guys saw in the last video, the eviction process started in or about October of 2020. And they were able to stretch that thing out, giving excuses about water damage and um, appealing, appealing the eviction. And eventually an $8,000 debt turned into a $44,000 debt. For Shirley Strawberry. And they didn't leave the premises until March of 2022. So they owed over $40,000 in rent after that whole process. Well, apparently during that time, it looks like Shirley's name uh, having an eviction blemish on it was not the only one that was happening at that time. Looks like at the same time, according to court documents, Nesto, Nesto's Buckhead LLC, doing business as Nesto's Parlor, in May of 2021, which is around the same time as all of that stuff that was going on with Shirley getting evicted out of that house, um, he was also getting evicted from the Nesto's Buckhead. So let me. Pull up the actual affidavit because this got real interesting. You know, nothing is ever cut and dry when it comes to him. So it looks like Nesto's Buckhead, like I said, around May of 2021, received an eviction as well. And it was on Far, Far Road, um, the Northeast Basement Below Deck in Atlanta, Georgia. And he was eventually served on June 8th of 2021. And it was served by posting a copy to the door of the premises and depositing the copy in the U.S. mail. So while he was coming up with this nice extravagant birthday for his wife in July of 2021, where he's coming with this big ring and all of this pomp and circumstance for this, um, these, uh, security guards coming in like she needed some security like she was Beyonce they were both going through evictions that I don't know if Shirley knew about it because this is from his barber shop and of course they had the eviction from the home so of course you guys know that Ernesto wasn't just going to take this line down whether he was really paying the rent or not so he answered this complaint for eviction. And you guys might find the answer very, very interesting when he actually answered the complaint. He answered it with a known excuse, let's see, that we heard before on the previous video when it comes to the house. So he answered and he represented himself. Notice his name is spelled E A R N E S T, that earnest. <laughs> is the one that was the defendant in the case. He doesn't really spell his name out here. You see, he just put that E so he can just scribble it out so you don't know what it is. And that's going to be interesting in a few minutes. But he says that um, it has now comes the defendant. The unit has real bad water damage. I could not operate business in a proper manner also develop a real bad mold all over the entire unit. So apparently he thought that because of this, like he mentioned in that other video that I had before about the at the house, remember at the house, one of his arguments that they had in the answer was there was water, there was flooding and they had to put in about $60,000 worth of work. And everybody was like, who puts in $60,000 worth of work in a home that they don't own? Well, he's being very consistent with his arguments as to why he is not paying the rent. He said, because it has real bad water damage. I could not operate business in a proper manner. 
also develop a real bad mo over the entire unit. So I want you intellects to tell me in the chat if you guys think <laughs> Jessica said. Jessica said that man's handwriting looks exactly like his speech remedial. I want you guys to tell me in the chat, do you think this was a good argument in order to keep him from being evicted out of these premises and not paying rent? Because I don't understand if you've rented properties all of this time, everyone knows, even if you do have damages to your property, you put it up in escrow or you have to show proof that there's been consistent contact with your landlord, that there are issues in the house. But somewhere around, somewhere along the way, Nesto has come with this argument that if you say that the property is jacked up, you don't have to pay, but you're fighting to stay there. You're saying the property is messed up, but I still want to stay there, so don't kick me out. Craziest concept. Okay, well, Janice said no. It didn't fly with the court. Sharon said nope, it didn't fly with the court. <laughs> Black Hourglass said, of course, Mike. I said, listen. You said operate, not operate, operate. Somebody says Sonya must have told him that would work. <laughs> Sonya said no. Okay, he, he said he could not operate the building. So everybody is looking at the grammar in here where he spells it O P E R. What is, wait a minute? O P E R T A T E. Operate the business. You guys catch everything. Okay, so that that was his excuse for not for not um paying. So then of course there was a hearing that took place and some of you guys have already guessed but at this hearing so an order of judgment was entered on July 13, 2021. Now mind you again, this judgment was entered what is it? 26 days before that video we saw where he has all of these security guards and he has the ring that he presents Shirley and all of that. This is, this is literally right before that, that he gets this order of eviction. So this is an order in judgment. The above style dispossessory matter came before the court for trial on July 9th, 2021. And plaintiffs haven't appeared and announced ready and defending haven't failed to appear. So you didn't show up for your own hearing after you did an answer. You didn't even try to get a lawyer. You ain't even try to get a little fake lawyer like it, it appears you've done on other occasions, allegedly. Again, he's innocent until proven guilty. You just didn't show up. So according to this, the plaintiff's motion to strike is hereby granted and... It is here by order. So basically, the plaintiffs must have did a motion to strike his answer because you didn't even show up to defend your own answer. So they granted that motion to strike. It is here by order that judgment is entered against defendants Nestos Buckhead LLC, DBA Nestos Parlor, and Ernest Williams with the A jointly and severally for rent prorated through July 9, 2021 of $24,677.42, a late fee of $2,467.74, and attorney fees of $4,071.77 and all costs of court. So it doesn't behoove you to try to stretch this thing out when you end up being tacked on with late fees and attorney fees. So you basically added seven more thousand dollars to your claim because you wanted to play these games. So then it has, it is further ordered that the writ of possession shall issue. And that was on July 9th of 2021 that this order was signed by the judge. Well, do you think that Nesto just let this thing go and was like, okay, that's cool. I'm going to pack my little rags and I'm going to go home. No, he did not just give up on this case, even though it looks like he was not paying any rent. 
And this is what he did. Notice of bankruptcy stay. The court, if hereby notified, it say the court, if hereby notified that on July 2nd, 2020, 2021, a, so he's saying before the actual court hearing date, he's saying he filed a bankruptcy, which would basically make whatever order it was, you know, there's a stay, as you guys probably know, especially if you follow this channel. We've had a, other cases of which people have filed bankruptcies in order to stay the orders from the judge. So there's an automatic stay. So it has the court, if is if hereby notified, that on July 2nd, 2021, a voluntary petition was filed pursuant to 11 U.S.C. Section 301 in the United States Bankruptcy Court for the Northern District of Georgia by defendant herein seeking relief under Title 11 United States Code that the case initiated by said petition Pursuant to 11 U.S.C., the filing of said petition operates as an automatic stay or the continuation of an action against the offendant or its property in the above style matter. So it has respectfully, and he spelled his name different right here. Look, his name Ernest without an A on this one when he addresses the court. So I think we've come to the conclusion that maybe his government name or the, the name on his birth certificate might be without the A. So we go on to look at this petition. And this was my Shirley Did You Know. As I scroll down to look at this petition, so he shows that he served the other lawyer on there to let him know, hey, I filed bankruptcy. So now it stayed and you cannot execute on this order. So like how they were trying to garnish Shirley's wages, you guys can't garnish. I don't know if he got had garnished had wages to garnish but this would stop that so this is what he did so as you guys see it just says mail so i was like hmm i don't see a case number but this is something that was filed with the landlord tenant court but he filed for chapter seven he has this mail to me it literally looks like the stamp that you use from Home Depot, Office Depot, or any of the office places that you do in office, because I use them as well to show, you know, what was mailed out or whatever. So he just has mailed up here. It's no case number. I tried to look this whole bankruptcy up and I couldn't really find it. But anyway, and then he has Shirley Strawberry. He was going to do a chapter seven. He has Shirley Strawberry and he has Ernest Williams. As you see, he spells it without the A. And he files a bankruptcy in both of their names on this date, allegedly. Allegedly, okay? And you're going to see why I say allegedly. So he attaches an exhibit B, which didn't make any sense to me, but what he's doing was, He's trying to explain that he, according to this order on July 12th. Now, mind you, you filed it on July 2nd is what you told the court. Let's go back. You said on July 2nd of 2021, you filed a voluntary petition. But then you attach some order, like a standing order from the bankruptcy court that says July 12th, which is 10 days later, 2021 that the court entered a general order 40-2020 on July 28th of 2020, permitting the electronic submission of pleadings by parties not represented by attorney. This order supersedes general order, and it has that effective July 12th of 2021 and applies only to pro se debtors that now they have more filing options where they can file the pleadings with the court in the following ways by U.S. mail to the Atlanta office. So basically, he was attaching this so I guess he can justify why it was not e-filed because if you guys see my documents, when you use the true filing system, it puts a case number when you file it and it stamps it. So this doesn't have a case number. So what he's trying to argue, I guess, to let the court know and landlord-tenant when they receive this, 
is the reasoning why is because he mailed it in. So that's probably why it's not a case number, but we gonna need you to go ahead and stay all of this, even though I'm saying it was mailed in. But if you literally look at the document he used, this wasn't even in effect till July 12, 2021, which is after your hearing date and after and and after July 2nd when you said that you actually filed this. So anyway, his point was to say that that's why I guess it was no, he could just mail it in and that's why it's no that's why it's no case number. So this is what he tried to use to stay it. So then I said, and he attached the order and the judgment and everything for the judge, even though he didn't even use the copy of the signed copy. He used, <laughs> he used the draft that he attached. He didn't even use the actual signed order. So then I said, self, I was like, I want to see because I didn't, I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell. Um, when I was trying to look it up, I did not see a bankruptcy for that time. So it was baffling me. I'm like, I know he did just tell this court that he filed a bankruptcy. And I see how he tried to do it as far as, like I just explained to you, why it was mailed and wasn't e-filed. And so while I was looking, I found another bankruptcy that was filed that he filed right before he went into jail. Because remember, he went to jail. July, he was arrested July 7th of 2022, and he's been in there ever since. So LaDame asked, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. You asked, when is Nesto's next court day? I'm from ATL. So he has a motion hearing for bonds because he has two cases of which one of them, he's saying that the bond is too high. It's for $800,000, and that's for the allegations that he was in possession of some child pictures that he should not have been in possession of. There's also a second case of a bunch of cases related to essay type charges where he has no bond. So he does have an upcoming bond hearing coming up on the 17th of which his attorney is trying to address bond for him to get out. Listen, I just want to know if Shirley knew he was filing bankruptcies, you know, and throwing her name on there like they were doing it together. But I guess if you just let somebody take over and um, take over all your finances and you don't know, maybe she didn't care because he obviously had all her information in order to to submit it. So then as I was looking, because I was trying to find this bankruptcy file. So I look and actually on April, and this is what it typically looks like, guys. When you e-file, it's not like he obviously knows how to do it because it's at the top, it will show when it was filed. It will have the case number because once you file it, all that stuff comes on there. So anyways, so it has on April 8th of 2022, Nesto actually filed a bankruptcy, a chapter 13. Again, he spells his name. He doesn't have the A in there. It's just E-R-N-E-S-T. And what's interesting, too, is if you guys have listened to the jail calls, I believe when he was talking to Sonia, he mentioned how Cobb County had his name as E-R. They have his name wrong. They have his Social Security name wrong. And he told Sonia that. And he told... um. I believe he told Shirley that when she was going to put money on her, he was telling her they spell it E-R. No, that's probably how you're supposed to spell it. E-A is what they call an alias because it's not really the name of which your mother named you or your father named you or what's on your birth certificate. So he filed. So April 8th, he went to jail July. So he knew something was going on because you try to file a chapter 13 to try to restructure. So it's April 8th of 2022. So I peruse and I go down just to see, and he uses that Bent Creek Manor, knowing he was evicted. But I guess, you know, he was still going through the whole processes because remember they didn't leave till like March of 2022 when the sheriffs came. So he uses the Bent Creek and I just highlighted, he did a chapter 13. 
They asked, have you filed for bankruptcy within the last year? He said no. On this document, he said he has not filed a bankruptcy in the last eight years. But wouldn't if you, the document that you submitted to the court, wouldn't that constitute within eight years if you actually filed it? Then it says, are any bankruptcy cases pending or being filed by a spouse who is not filing this case with you or by a business partner or by any affiliate? He also answered no. So even though that document said on July 2nd, it was filed. According to this one that we know was filed because you can pull it up. He's alleging he did. He has not filed bankruptcy within the last eight years. And there is not a bankruptcy that is pending. Then you go further down. You know, he says he's following, he's filing under chapter 13. So it's basically um, the business reorganization. So then I guess he scribbled this out because they had him to check. Because, you know, when you file bankruptcy, they make you go through like credit counseling and you have to check that you went through it. So I guess he was going to say he um, went through credit counseling and he said, no, let me let me change that answer. <laughs> he scribbled it out. It's like, let me change that answer. And uh, <laughs> I changed my mind. So he did. And that's the thing with a lot of people that I noticed, they'll follow that are accused of these type of crimes. And again, he's innocent until proven guilty, but they file these bankruptcies and it's almost like with, it's not with an intent to go through with it. It's just with the intent of once you file it under the law, they know there's an automatic stay. So everything stops. So they file these these bankruptcies, but they don't attach none of the documents that are required for a bankruptcy. And then they'll weigh it out until ultimately it's dismissed because you haven't really complied or turned anything in. So then he says, it says, how many creditors do you estimate that you owe? He, he checked the one to 49. How much do you estimate your assets to be worth? He said 100,000 to 500,000. How much do you estimate your liabilities? 50,000 to 100,000. So then as you go down, you know, they attach they attach whether you've turned in everything that you're supposed to turn in. And then he only lists two creditors. And it's interesting, the creditors, because we all know that Nesto has these luxury cars that he uses for this security company. So one of the places that he owe is called Atlanta Fine Cars. Let's, let's take a perusal over at Atlanta Fine Cars. So he did all of this just to get out of the debt for the cars. So here we go. This is Atlanta Fine Cars. Look at the Bentley. You know, they got some nice Cadillac Escalades. Looks, so they obviously they have luxury cars majority of them look like they may be luxury cars so this is a place that he listed so during all of this before you're you're trying to obviously get out of whatever you own you owe for these cars another uh creditor that he has on here is um let me see Lara's trucks 
and that's in Duluth. I think um, they have some stuff on Instagram. I just had a bunch of reviews. But yeah, so it looks like the car companies were the ones that he was trying to whatever. So he didn't even put anything else on there. Now you got getting evicted off the premises. We don't know about the equipment. We'll never hear what happened to the equipment. You have all this other stuff and all you put on here to try to reorganize is these cars. So I'm assuming that he was doing this specifically for the... um the uh security company thank you teresa fox for the super chat i appreciate that sharon said that's the old the joker hey sarah said good to see you yes welcome to all the new intellects it's 1400 of you guys in here almost 1500 make sure you hit the like subscribe if you have not done so already Are you guys really shocked though? You can't be, you can't be really shocked. So then he goes down and of course I highlight all the forms that were not submitted. So he didn't do his statement of financial affairs. He didn't turn in his schedules. He didn't turn in the summary of his assets and liabilities. He did not turn in the declaration about debtor schedules. He did not turn in the chapter 13 current monthly income. And so around July, I believe he ended up, um, he ended up, um, basically they, they just dismissed, they dismissed this while he was in jail. So he never turned any of this stuff in. So it ended up being dismissed. But the point was, I was able, by looking at this, assuming that this was the one, obviously it was filed. We have really no proof that the chapter seven he filed in order to stop the eviction over there on Far Street for his um, Nesto's parlor. We have no, we are without sufficient evidence that that was ever filed. But he definitely filed it with the court under the guise as if it was. But really, all the court had to look to say, okay, so you filed this on July, you turned, you you mailed this on July second, but this order didn't come out till July twelfth. Like, how did you know? Did they tell you in advance that this order was about to come out? Like, how did you even know that? Let me see. There's a question. Let me try to see. Let me see. Before I pull up. Trying to find the question for Andrew. Andrew had a question. Andrew, if you could retype it, because I can't, I don't see it. I don't see the question. I'm trying to look to see. So was this the question? I thought he owned Atlanta fine cars or had some sort of stake in it. I don't know. I'm not real. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm not real familiar with that, unfortunately, but I'll definitely look into it. Hey, or if you have any information, you know, we investigate over here. Yes, he actually did. So he filed the bankruptcy on that. But then another way that he was getting over allegedly was as she just mentioned, the other intellect just mentioned about how he would owe individuals and not pay for the services that were rendered. That was one of the actual allegations 
what the actual allegations um that he had. Let me pull that up. So many of you have also asked, so I wanted to go over that real quick before we hop off this live. There was an allegation that actually was no lay price of some services and people were asking, well, why would people give ser render services to him and not get paid? So I'm going to show you what is alleged, how he was able to render, get these services for his cars for this security company. So now we see that he filed bankruptcy in order to avoid some payment for those cars, allegedly. And then now we have one of the incident reports from Roswell is there is a crime of deposit account fraud. And that was the auto dealership at Palmer Dodge. So according to this, this is what was alleged that he did. So this is aside from bankruptcy to avoid payment, it looks like that there may be other ways that Nesto has tried to avoid payments. So according to this, on July 18th of 2022, Officer Fields, we know who she is, even Shirley has talked about her on the call saying that when she got her car taken while she was at the salon, Officer Fields was one of the ones that was there trying to talk to her and let her know, hey, you don't know who your husband is. I'm, we trying to help you out. We're actually looking out for you, even though you don't think that we are. But Officer Field spoke with Tammy, the financial controller at Palmer Dodge in Fulton County. And she stated that on November 19th, 2021. So this is the same year. He's filed bankruptcy. He's got evicted from his house. He's got evicted from his parlor. But at the same time, he's buying Shirley Diamond rings. And he's also having this security come and, you know, escort her so she can have the best birthday of her life. But anyway, according to this, on November 19, 2021, Ernest Williams, a.k.a. Ernesto Williams, with Nesto's Elite Private Security, brought a 2012 Dodge Charger that was registered to Nesto's Elite Private Security into Palmer Dodge for servicing. On November 21st of 2022, Williams and his assistant with Simonette Transportation returned to Palmer Dodge to retrieve his vehicle. One of the employees with Palmer Dodge, Torres, received the check payment, and it was a Navy Federal check number 212 in the amount of $2,774.40. Torres stated that Williams and his assistant arrived after 1,600 hours, and Williams stated that his assistant would be writing the check on his behalf. Wonder who his assistant was. On November 22nd of 2021, Palmer Dodge was notified that said check was returned due to insufficient funds. Torres contacted Williams on December 1st of 2021, informing Williams that the check had not cleared. Between December 1st, 2021 and December 21st, 2021, Torres contacted Williams multiple times trying to obtain payment for services. Williams responded multiple times saying, that he was out of state. He'll be back soon with the payment. But Williams never returned. Doesn't that sound familiar? On December 22nd, 2021, Sexton sent a letter to Nestle's Elite Private Security, LLC, and Seminet Transportation at Williams' residence at the time on Bent Creek Manor. Sexton stated in the letter that pursuant to OCGA 16-9-20, that he had 10 days to pay the total amount due plus a fee of $30 or 5%, the face amount of the check, plus any fees charged, bringing the new total due to $2,943.12. 
Palmer Dodge has not received payment or had any response from Williams. Based on the information above, I am charging Williams with OCGA 16-9-20 deposit account fraud and OCGA 16-8-5 theft of services for the amount of $2,774.40. How ratchet is that that you can't, you riding around in Bentleys, but you can't pay $2,700 for your fees? That is so ridiculous to me. Twenty sep. Nicole. <laughs> Nicole said the car probably had water damage. Sis Soldier said it's ghetto fabulous. I just can't like this whole. And if you guys, please make sure you watch the other videos where we go over the documents because you see how he allegedly finessed these women out of their cars. He was getting them to put titles of the cars, allowing allowing him to put money they paid or cars that they gave to him to sell in his name. He was giving other people the ability to drive them. It's crazy how this dude allegedly, how it's being portrayed <laughs> that he is out here finessing folks. That is just crazy to me. So it looks like he used the bankruptcy to try to stop his eviction. And then with this, he's just writing bad checks, you know? And remember from the previous video from the house, there were bad checks that were that were written as well, according to the landlord. They had at least two times of insufficient funds. So anyway, he is currently in Fulton County Jail on two counts of theft by deception, and they have the warrant number. Roswell Police Department dated July 24th, and they have the warrant number. South Fulton Police Department dated June 4th, 2022. Williams also has a warrant for larceny out of Henry County, and it has the warrant number. That was dated February 19th of 2019. Williams is also wanted out of California for two counts of fraud. Now, the California case is open, but they, if, say he goes on Tuesday and somehow it get, everything gets reduced to the point where he can afford it, or he gets people that's willing to pay to get him out. Um, California said they're not coming to Georgia to pick him up. Now, if he step his foot back in California, they said then it's all fair game. But they did say that they weren't trying to take him back or extradite him back to California. But he does have open cases in California as well. So they received the warrant. The two warrants were obtained and faxed to Fulton County Jail. So he was served, it was served on Williams due to him being booked at the jail. Um, and then they attached the they attached the documents, I guess, with all the evidence <laughs> to the file so that they could give to the prosecutor and everybody else that's involved. And that's another thing. He received people think I guess he was out just because. He was consistently getting new warrants. No, they will they will politely serve them to you. And that's still considered an arrest, even though you're already arrested and incarcerated at the time. So all of those warrants, he was just getting them. So him making it seem like he doesn't know. So maybe that's what it is. When he was receiving these warrants, like what they have on there and they give the factual basis in the warrants, that must have been what he was talking about he received and he was trying to get Shirley to, um, in the jail call, was trying to get Shirley to say, to, to blame everything on her daughter. Like I read that warrant. I'm like, you read all of them because they have to serve you the warrant for your arrest. So you got this, what you see, it shows that he got this warrant, but he never mentioned about not paying for these services in any of those jail calls. He made it seem like all his charges were because of her. That's the only, oh, I saw that warrant. No, you saw all. 
you saw every last one of those and the factual allegations that they alleged in order to arrest you. He knows Shirley knows. He knows Shirley knows she wants the lifestyle. He and you know, and that was a conversation that I had because a lot of people were saying, Well, how do you fall for it? But if you have someone that drives up to you and they have a Bentley, I think the way we are conditioned, it's like if you have a half a million dollar car, you probably have money. And that's how you get finessed out of your money because in your mind, you're like, why would someone take my money that already has their own money? So even though, and it's just his thought process. And then people like that, they don't care about pe other people. They care about themselves. That's why if you go on his Instagram page, it just trips me out that he talks about, oh, it's about wealth. And I'm building and I'm doing that. And it's like, you really believe this? Like, you really believe that you're just doing big things out here by, by doing it in this fashion, allegedly? But I guess. You guys, please make sure you hit the like button. Again, the saga continues. I just wanted to know if Shirley knew that he was trying to get up out of that eviction and file a chapter seven. Allegedly, I don't think it was actually filed. I think he just put mailed on there because he knew he didn't have a case number and he wanted the court to believe that he actually filed it. And I don't believe that he did, but but yet and still, again, we have we have the whole um, let me see that video. Of Nesto on Shirley's birthday. I keep going back to that. Like, this is all around the same time. Like, how do you even? That's just crazy to me. And this is the video I've been alluding to for those of you that don't know. This is on his Instagram page. If you guys want to go check it out, let, let me ask you a question. The woman that you about to ask me this question about, do you love her? Yes, sir. Can, can, could, could you, when you think about it, you, you, you can't live without it? That might be the no. charger he was getting fixed is, is, over is there. Is the woman of your dream? Yes, sir. If, if, do you think about her oftentimes before you think about yourself? Yes, sir. Would you die for her? Yes, absolutely. Would you, would you take Care of her before you took care of yourself. Yeah. Would, let me ask you this here: Would you love everything about her and everybody connected to her as if it was your own? Yeah. Okay then. Sure. Yes. This your man right here. The mess though. Wait a minute. <laughs> This oh. happy birthday is Ernesto. And this is your birthday, sir. And Ernesto oh is here. <laughs> so well, it's my birthday. Yeah. It is. Uh -huh. Oh, congratulations. Thank happy you. birthday. Thank you. Tell me one gift. Oh, if you had to choose one, which one would it be? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For my birthday, I know that would be amazing. Thank you. I'm really excited about that. Happy birthday. Uh, brought to you by my beautiful husband. You all right? Yeah. The cake looks good right there. I love these balloons. These are really pretty. These are really pretty. And the cake, oh my God, it's like a cake on top of a cake with cupcakes and strawberries. And then you got chocolate covered strawberries. And then we have some sparkles yeah. to put on. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Happy birthday and congratulations, Shirley Strawberry and James. Live on the radio. Live on the radio. Thank you, guys. This is live on the radio. That caller was set up. Talk to me about it extensively. He just walked in for Shirley's birthday and just asked Shirley to ring. Oh to God, marry him. Ring. <laughs> Carla. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you guys knew this. You guys knew That's that charger. Pay them people that $2,400 allegedly. You ain't need <laughs> You guys all knew everybody in the office is like here. Mm-hmm. Wow. Congratulations, girl. Congratulations. Thank you guys. You guys. Well, you guys get the hint. This is literally, as you guys see, it says July 28th of 2021. Nesto, it was just too much going on where you was trying to hold on to houses and and buildings. And, and what you heard in the background was the proposal that he did online and people were saying it was a red flag because she didn't even know not online i'm sorry on the radio station because she didn't even know that it was her husband i mean was nesto like they had to tell her like this your man so people was like oh well that's the you didn't know him if you didn't even know it was him but anyway guys hope you guys enjoyed the live make sure you hit this like button if you have not done so already We are still investigating this case. As more information comes, we will definitely discuss it. Again, next week, there is a bail hearing. So we will definitely be discussing that as well and what happens with that. And we are following all the open cases and every any new information that we get. I'm going to bring it to you as I find it. I'll bring it to you guys like I did today. But anyway, I thank you so much. I'm glad that you love the channel. I love you guys back. Good night to everybody. Make sure you guys hit that like button, like I said, on your way out if you have not done so already. It helps me out. Also, the Cash App is there if anybody wants to donate. Again, it's not mandatory, but it's always appreciated. If anybody would like to give a Cash App, this is the Cash App right here. Also, our mods put it in the chat and it's just usually to cover you know some of the documents do cost a couple of dollars we appreciate all of your support nevertheless just hit the like button that helps us out yes we love you we love you we love you everybody be safe thank you andrea i appreciate it and until next time i'm gonna holler at you guys later